Welcome, dear viewers, to another video. Thank you so much for watching. These days, we autumn enthusiasts are reveling in the anticipation of darker fall days and Halloween. And my YouTube subscription page is a mosaic of light gossamer beauty and dark arcane imagery. I am so inspired. Which is why today I am going to share two Halloweeny poems and some food ideas to enhance your spooky season. Let's start with making treats so that we can nibble on them while listening to some uncanny poetry. How about some delicious jack-o'-lantern cookies with plum jam? Here is how to make the dough. Top 250 grams of flour with 75 grams of starch, 110 grams of caster sugar, some vanilla flavored sugar or vanilla extract, 150 grams of butter, which should be at room temperature for this recipe and doesn't have to be chilled, and one egg. Then knead everything together until you get a smooth dough. Chill in the fridge for about 60 minutes. And now for the fun part. Roll out the dough on a floured work surface and cut out your cookies. I got these jack-o'-lantern cutters off Amazon, but I am sure they can be found in lots of places. Once you've cut out your cookies, place them on a cookie sheet topped with baking parchment and bake them one batch at a time at 180 degrees Celsius for about 10 minutes. They will still feel soft to the touch when they come out of the oven. Don't let that fool you and leave them in too long, they are just trying to trick you. Once they are completely cooled, you can sandwich them together with the plum jam or any other jam you like. Almost any filling will give a lovely effect to the eyes. The possibilities for alternative and more exciting flavor combinations are endless. I have also tried spicing the dough with lots of cardamom and using orange marmalade for the filling. Time to taste them and to enjoy some poetry. Everyone is recommending spooky novels these days, so I thought I'd draw your attention to some short form. I went on the hunt for old and new poems and found a 19th century gem by Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Haunted Houses All houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. Through the open doors, the harmless phantoms on their errands glide, with feet that make no sound upon the floors. We meet them at the doorway, on the stair, along the passages they come and go, impalpable impressions on the air, a sense of something moving to and fro. There are more guests at table than the hosts invited, the illuminated hall is thronged with quiet, inoffensive ghosts, as silent as the pictures on the wall. The spirit world around this world of sense floats like an atmosphere and everywhere wafts through these earthly mists and vapor stents a vital breath of more ethereal air. So from the world of spirits there descends a bridge of light, connecting it with this o'er whose unsteady floor that sways and bends wander our thoughts above the dark abyss. Isn't it a wonderful poem? I'd love to read in the comments whether you had read or heard it before. But now it's time for food again. Let's make pumpkin soup with adorable cheesy ghosts made from pizza dough. You'll need some finely diced onion, cubed pumpkin, salt, pepper and ground ginger for seasoning, powdered broth and cream. Of course, you can also add other vegetables like potato and spices to taste. I went for the very basic version today. Heat some olive oil and start frying your onion. After two to three minutes, also add the pumpkin cubes, powdered broth and the seasoning. Cover with water and simmer on medium heat for 20 to 30 minutes. Then blend the mixture and add your cream. All done. For the ghosts, we need pizza dough, store-bought or homemade, olive oil, grated cheese and black sesame seeds. Use a ghost-shaped cookie cutter to cut out your shapes, 
Then brush with olive oil, sprinkle with the cheese and use the sesame to create two little eyes each. Then bake your ghosts at 200 degrees Celsius for 10 to 15 minutes. Serve together with the soup. Is it even full without pumpkin soup? The second poem I'd like to share is from K.A. Opperman's collection Past the Glad and Sunlit Season, Poems for Halloween. It's a collection that comprises more than 60 poems to get you in the Halloween spirit and was published in 2020. The book does also have illustrations, but I found those a bit tacky and rather uninspired. Some of the poems I really liked though. Here is one of them. Mine is the path of the willow the wisp, roaming October's majestical woods. Mine is the path where the maples grow crisp and mushrooms all huddle their hoods. Mine is the way that no other has gone, pathless my footstep but pointed my tread. Mine is the way between twilight and dawn, where wander the lost and the dead. Mine is the lantern that mournfully glows, carved of a pumpkin and hearted with flame. Mine is the lantern a trickster once chose to follow a fate without aim. Mine is the path of the willow the wisp, lost in the autumn, forever astray. Mine is the path where the maples grow crisp, with scarlet to carpet my way. I very much hope this video has contributed to getting you in the spirit for Halloween. Have a relaxing weekend, please consider subscribing if you liked the video and do come back for more books and picnics.